Assalamu alaikum everyone. In the previous lecture we have covered the voltage and current waves in the transmission line and we also talked about the surge impedance which is actually the characteristic impedance of the transmission line which is lossless. So if I have to define the surge impedance uh, it is surge impedance So it is actually the characteristic impedance of a lossless line. So characteristic impedance of the lossless line. So if you remember in the last lecture we defined that the characteristic impedance it is equal to Z over Y. So this is your impedance, this is your admittance. And for the lossless line, the resistance and conductance, they are both equal to zero. Now if I replace resistance, conductance in the characteristic impedance formula with zero, then the characteristic impedance will become R plus J omega L over G plus J omega C. So if R is equal to 0, conductance is equal to 0, J omega will cancel out with J omega. So the characteristic impedance will become under root L over C. So this is known as surge impedance. We also know that in transmission line, specifically in the long transmission line, we have distributed parameters. Distributed parameters means that for each segment of the transmission line, we have a specific capacitance value as well as inductance values. So we have a capacitance and inductance that are distributed. So in the transmission line, uh, which is not loaded, if we switch the circuit breaker of the source voltage side then the capacitance of the transmission line which is in the shunt branch it actually start to charge and it, it requires a finite amount of time to get charged so when whenever the source voltage is applied the capacitors are charged and when the circuit is closed at the receiving end end as well then the current will pass through the series inductance as well and the series inductance will consume the electrical energy so the capacitance actually provides the kvrs and the inductance they absorb the kvr so if i have to write the capacitance it actually provides the kvr and the inductance it absorbs the kvr So whenever the receiving end voltage side, it actually get closed or the switch at the receiving end is closed, then the inductance of the transmission line will actually consume the electrical energy because of which we have a voltage drop across the line. And that voltage drop is actually compensated by the capacitance that is in the shunt branch that provides the KVR that are being absorbed by the inductance or these kvrs are kilo volt ampere reactive so this is the unit of reactive power so the consumption of energy in the inductors actually causes a voltage drop the inductor actually requires the kvr they absorb the kvrs and the capacitors provide the kvrs so if for any load for a certain load the reactive power or kvrs absorbed by the inductor if the reactive power absorbed by the inductor becomes equal to the uh, kvrs provided by the capacitor
so that particular load is known as surge impedance load so any load for which the kvr absorbed by the inductor are actually compensated by the kvr provided by the capacitor that particular load is known as surge impedance load and by this equation for example this is equation a we can say that the power absorbed by the inductor that can be written as i square xl so this is the current through the inductor and this is the inductive reactance it is equal to v square over xc so this is voltage across the shunt capacitor x is the capacitive reactance so now now if i will solve it it will become i square omega l is equal to v square omega c and omega will cancel out and v over i is equal to under root l over c and this is your surge impedance so this is another way of uh, understanding concept of surge impedance so again the surge impedance is actually equal to the square root of inductance and capacitance ratio and it is resistive So now if I have to define the surge impedance loading so it can be termed as the loading corresponding to the surge impedance is known as surge impedance loading and by this statement i means that if your loading is same as the surge impedance we know that the surge impedance it is actually resistive so if your loading is also resistive or your load is resistive then the power that is being transmitted that is known as surge impedance loading of the transmission line so now for the formula of the surge impedance loading sil it is actually equal to power so it is 3 vr ir right because this is your phase voltage so that's why we are using 3 with it if it would be a line voltage then then 3 this 3 would be replaced by under root 3 so the sil surge impedance loading will be equal to 3 times the receiving end voltage and the receiving end current now in this equation equation number 1 we don't know the value of i r which is the receiving end current at the receiving end the loading if it is equal to zl it is just the ratio of the receiving end voltage and receiving end current and at the surge impedance loading that the receiving end loading is actually equal to the surge impedance zc so from here i can calculate the ir which is equal to vr over zc so i will use this formula in the sil equation and that equation will become sil is equal to 3 vr vr over zc is equal to 3 vr square over zc and remember that this vr the receiving end voltage is a phase voltage so now if i have to convert this uh, sil equation into in terms of uh, line voltage so sil is equal to 3 vr square over zc and we know that vr is actually equal to v line over under root 3 so if i'll use this formula the sil will become 
vl square over z c watts this is the final equation for the surge impedance loading so now we know that uh, at the surge impedance loading the surge impedance is resistive and the receiving and voltage and current should be in phase so now we have to check whether they are in phase or not so now we are going to analyze the long transmission line at surge impedance so i will just write it down here long transmission line at surge impedance So we are going to calculate the sending and voltage and sending and current in terms of receiving and voltage and receiving and current. So we already know the sending and voltage and current equations for the long transmission line. So these are Vs is actually equal to Vr cos hyperbolic gamma L plus Ir Zc sine hyperbolic gamma L. Similarly, for the sending and current, it is Vr 1 over Zc, which is the characteristic impedance, sine hyperbolic gamma L plus Ir cos hyperbolic gamma L. So now, at surge impedance loading or for the surge impedance, we know that the attenuation constant is actually equal to 0. This gamma is the propagation constant. And it has two parts alpha plus beta j this is your attenuation constant and this is your phase constant so for the lossless line the attenuation constant is actually equal to zero so if i will replace gamma with beta j because alpha is equal to zero so the source voltage equation that will become vr cos hyperbolic beta j L plus IR ZC sin hyperbolic L beta J. By using the trigonometric identities, we know that cos hyperbolic j beta l that will be equal to cos beta l and sin hyperbolic j beta l is equal to sin beta l and there is a j as well in the sine equation so the source voltage equation that will become vr cos beta l plus ir zc sin beta l and there is a j term with that as well now in the previous calculation we have derived the formula for the ir the receiving end current which is actually equal to receiving end voltage divided by the characteristic impedance or the surge impedance in this case so if i replace ir is equal to vr over zc the equation will become Vs is equal to Vr cos beta L plus J I R sorry J V R over Z C into Z C sine beta L. So these Z C will cancel out and Vs is equal to Vr cos beta L plus J sine beta so I can write it down as Vs is equal to Vr angle beta L. So this is your phase constant, length of the line, receiving end voltage and sending end voltage. Similarly, if you solve again for the sending end current, so Is will be equal to Ir angle beta L. 
So from these two equations A and B, we can see that at the surge impedance loading, sending and receiving end voltages and currents are in phase, right? So the voltage angle is beta L at the receiving end and the current angle is also beta L. So at surge impedance loading, sending and receiving and voltages and currents are in phase. Sending and receiving and voltages and currents both are in phase right because the surge impedance it is resistive and the load it is corresponding to the uh, surge impedance or it is equivalent to the surge impedance so the load is also resistive and the surge impedance is also resistive so both the quantities the voltage at the receiving and the current at the receiving end both are in phase